transparent. It's first building permit. Turn it around so I can see. You did good. There's our development resource center. Years ago, we decided that we were going to move all of our planning and development services to one building that used to be spread out all over the Chattanooga Bay. Oh. Well, not all over downtown, all over Chattanooga. Yeah. So, Barrett, what do you think? Cool. Was that the second time you had been in there or the first? Yeah, second. I forgot what you came, what you went in to get the first time. First time I went to the Rock, whatever that service is. I don't know. Wasn't was that to was that the address? That's when we were requesting the address. Must have been. Anyway, uh, trying to train Barrett on how to get a how to pull a building permit. The process has gotten a little more complicated over the years. Um, thankfully, we can now download the forms and fill them out and email them back in so that if everything's in order, all we have to do is just go in and pick it up and pay for it. But as you've seen, <laughs> that the emailing system doesn't always work. Yeah, It's a little, there's a little bit of bureaucracy you have to deal with. There's several different desks. So you have a land disturbance permit, which allows you to uh, disturb the ground uh, because the, con the concern there is erosion control they want to make sure that if, if, when you excavate for footings or basements or any grading that you have the proper silt fence around the property. And then you have your building and that permit was around, what was it, two, two, three, two or three hundred bucks? Yeah, two hundred something. Two hundred some odd bucks for about a three hundred thousand dollar project. And it's based really also on the amount of land you're disturbing. We were only disturbing about five or six thousand square feet so um wasn't you know a quarter of an acre or whatever uh, those permits get more involved if you're clearing over an acre in our city and, and this is true in a lot of a lot of municipalities where if you're disturbing more than an acre of land you would have to do a hydrology report to see the effects of the clearing on drainage and that kind of thing so, and then you have your building permit. It's not a complicated process. It depends on what city you live in. The, like our, Chattanooga is one of the more progressive cities in, in, in Tennessee. So we have, you know, environmental issues that we have to deal with. If you're in the rural area, most likely, all you're gonna have is a simple, if you have anything at all, it'll just be a one page form that says, you know, here's the address, tax huh. map number, uh, I can remember Barrett in Chattanooga when I first started building in 1980. Um, it was just a one page thing, job address, tax map number, you know, contract value. And you basically just paid the city enough money to have the building inspector, electrical inspector come out a few times, you know. And now it's fully blown, you know, blower door testing. And I'm just gonna get into that a little bit later. But um, the inspection process is a lot more complicated now. Uh, you'll have, uh, you know, footing inspections, foundation inspections, framing inspection, insulation, you know, pre-drywall. You know, of course, you got all your systems, electrical, plumbing, HVAC, and, you know, all that. So I was trying to get you a good view of our development resource center. Here it is in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Very beautiful building. And years ago, uh, I remember when I started in this business in 1978 and we had all these different offices and places we had to go to get building permits and plumbing permits and sewer permits. And thankfully now we all, we have all of this stuff in one building for the city and the county actually. Planning, zoning, building inspection, everything here. And so what I thought I would do is just go over some of the information uh, that might help other people uh, when pulling a building permit, we call it pulling a building permit, when applying for a building permit. And this is gonna be true 
of most, a lot of cities are modeled after, you know, each other. There's not a lot, a whole lot of reinventing going on with this kind of stuff. So every decent sized city or county will have a building permit form that you will fill out. If I go back, this is our website here in Chattanooga, Tennessee for the city of Chattanooga that has a forms and permit page. And I bet if you do a search in your own city for building permit forms, you will probably come to a similar website. And this seems to be like a lot of stuff. And it is if you are actually going to have to do all of this. But for residential, it's pretty simple. And uh, starting out, you would just start out with your residential building application. That's what I was on earlier. And it's just a few pages. The bulk of the information is right here. You would just place your street uh, number and address here and your zip code, your ta state tax map number. You can get that from your local uh, GIS, your geographical information system, or your uh, it, it would be on your deed or on your survey. There's plenty of different places you could get that information. You could literally probably just call your city and say, hey, what number do I call? You give them the number, your address, and they could they would probably just give you the uh, tax map number. It's like they're 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 typically uh, would be a number like 127A dash E, you know, dash 011, something like that, that kind of format. Those are like book numbers, page numbers, and so on. And then you would have lot number. Again, this would be a part of the subdivision, the plat information on your deed. And then you go on down to the property owner. Now, most states uh, allow the property owner to pull the building permit themselves. So in our case, we typically have an owner here that we're listing. And then we list ourselves right here as the contractor. But for residents, uh, typically an owner, and this is what this really, this course is all about is you as an owner being able to pull your own building permit or to apply, we use the term pull a building permit and I keep using that, but this is an application you're applying for building permit. Now you will we'll have wanted to do all of the things that on our checklist that we had stated earlier in some of the other, in the planning classes, because at this point you're, you're basically ready to go with construction and this is typically a non-refundable fee. So you want to make sure that you've done all the things that we've talked about in checklist prior to this, before you, this, this building permit is actually fairly far down the, down the road, down the list. Uh, you just want to get this permit when you're literally ready to start, even the same week, because you only get this permit for 12 months. And I've literally uh, been pushed for, for time before on these things. In most cities, if, you, if your billing permit expires, you will have to pay this fee all over again. So you do not want to get this permit until you're absolutely ready and you have your site clearing and sometimes we will cheat and actually do a little clearing and have everybody lined up and ready to go although we don't disturb any ground until I talk about this next uh, permit I will after this one so then this is it seems like a lot of complication you know complicated things here but basically you're just going to check new construction right here and then single family because that's what we're talking about. Single family detached and the basic dimensions here, don't worry about all the offsets, just do the gross, basically widths and heights. And here, wood frame is typically what you would uh, list for the construction type. And then your front setbacks, most of the time it's gonna be around 25 feet. You just wanna check that, the rear would be 25. 
and the left side and right side would typically be around uh, 15 feet. Uh, but you, again, these are restrictions that are set up in your subdivision or wherever you know wherever you purchase your property. The deed, the you know, you would have deed restrictions also. This is something that the developer would set up in your, and it would be for the most part be based on zoning requirements uh, that your local municipality has. Then you got your number of bedrooms and off street parking typically is two. And then here it says what is to be built. I usually just say, you know, 2,800 square foot, you know, three bedroom, single family home or something like that. Nothing too crazy there. And this is just a, a disclaimer page basically saying that just because the city's giving you a billing permit doesn't mean that you have the right to do whatever you want. <laughs> and then you just sign here and that's it. And uh, t what I do is I basically download these forms. I'll fill them out and I'll use a, a scanner on my phone. I'll scan them and then send them back to the city. Typically, there's going to be some kind of question they have and this saves you time. What you want to do is try to get your permit to the point to where it's approved and ready to be paid for. Then you can just go down and basically pick it up and pay for it. As far as costs go, let's see, I need to do a calculation here. I think it's about, what was this last permit? Our house was, let's just say $300,000 for this contract and it was around $1,200. So $1,200 divided by $300,000 equals 0.004 about a half a percent that's in our city yours may uh, may be different now that's that's the building uh, permit now what you're going to want to do is in most cities you're going to have a land disturbance permit and then right here you can see there's a simple residential land disturbance application now what this is dealing with, and so for some reason it's downloading instead of opening it. Okay, so this looks like a building permit and our city has basically just become lazy and decided to reproduce this and cause us to have to actually fill out basically the same information over again. But what you would do here is your contract of the work this would be your grading your clearing work not you wouldn't put the entire contract amount of your house or the value of your house here again you would just put contract value of work so if it was going to cost you five thousand dollars worth of work to get the lot cleared you would put that here not the entire amount of 300,000. So then you basically have the same information as your building permit, you have the property information, the owner, contractor, and so on. And then down here, it's basically the same too. You've got new construction, residential, and then this little box right here, you'll see, this is the kicker. And you'll, you'll see that the point of this land disturbance permit is to make sure that um, well, mainly that you are c preventing erosion. Let's just type in silt fencing. This is probably the easiest way to show this. You've seen these before on construction sites. So this isn't the best picture, but you can see uh, basically it's just a, a filtration fabric that is, uh, has these stakes that you can drive up and keep it in place. And what, basically what it does is keeps the uh, silt, the, the mud, from migrating from the construction site to the, to the, uh, the non-construction site areas. And water, water can flow through this fabric, but the mud will get trapped, the silt will get trapped on the other side, and that's why we call it a silt fence. Now they have different types of silt fence. The one that I like now is the it's basically like a sock. Here we go. Images. It's this. Let's see, I was trying to find one that was installed somewhere. What is this? Here it is. And again, a little tiny picture. But 
you can see here, it's basically a, 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 filter, a filtered fabric. It's like a, um, a netting that has straw in it, okay? And it does the same thing, but it's easier to install. Let's go back here if I can get a better picture. And sometimes you will see it uh, in conjunction with the other type of silk fence, like here. It just, it, uh, you can use, depending on, you know, how, how bad your, how much slope you have and how much water runoff, you would use these in combination with each other. But I have basically just used this type before uh, by itself. It's easy to lay out and stake down, and um, but the whole the whole point of this is that the city wants to know basically the area that you're disturbing. If it's over an acre, you would end up having to do a hydrology report, which is typically not done except in like small commercial commercial projects. Okay, so typically this is going to be a no here where it says application. I don't know if you can see this. These are these would be hydrology type reports and you, you just click no here for residential. Project completion date here, uh, proposed starting date, proposed completion date. You wanna give yourself a year and again, don't apply for this permit until you're ready to start, okay? I had a job one time where I went, I was excited about the project and I went and pulled the permit and it was freaking three months before we could get started because of the owner and the person they wanted to hire to do the um, uh, clearing. And you know, we, I could have took my guy and got it cleared in a couple of weeks, but anyway, it's a long story. The point is, is that they used up three months of our 12 months <laughs> and we got it done, but it was right at the deadline. So you don't want to apply for your permits until you're absolutely ready to start. And, and that's kind of the point of this is that basically what the, your municipality is going to want you to do is just show them on a site plan. This would be the blank page that you would draw your site plan on, but I will show you how we do it at Artisan Construction. So being a design build company, and this is not, this is actually the, <laughs> the facts diversion. I have a, a better version of this, but we do our own design build work. So I actually did a site plan and this is, you can do this yourself though. When you go to pull your building permit, you'll have to have a site plan like this that just shows the property lines, which would be these dashed lines. And you would draw the rough outline of your house. You would draw you know, the dimensions and then show the setbacks. You can see here from this right side property line, it's 15 feet seven. From the front, it's 28 feet here. I don't know if you can see my pointer. And then on the left, we've got 13 two. And then in the back, this lot is very long. So we've got over 190 feet. But this, this here, this dash line here is indicating the silt fence. Now you can do all this by hand. Uh, they, they don't, they're not gonna require you to have an architect or an engineer uh, or a surveyor do this. I just do this because uh, I've, I've got experience in uh, drawing work. I worked in architecture for seven. Out of the 40 years I've been in this business, seven to 10 of it have spent, I've spent in architecture. So I'm familiar with how these site plans work. But uh, going back to the actual application, you can see here on this land development, this land disturbance permit, you can get, take this blank page and draw out your site. You can actually use the same site plan for your building permit too. And so it looks like a lot of rigmarole and it kind of feels that way, but it's not that big of a deal. Honestly, it takes about 10 minutes to fill this form out and take a little time to draw your site plan. One thing I did want to mention is that if you need help with your site plan, uh, we can do, that's one of the services that we do provide. Uh, you know, we provide design and build, you know, consulting, drafting, planning, and, you know, consulting that you would need help with. Uh, it's not, honestly, not that expensive uh, to help you get a site plan done. If you have 
all the information, like an old survey, that type of thing. And uh, but if you uh, need any help with this type of thing, uh, you can contact us at uh, you know atdrafting.com. It would be the place to, to contact us. Oh, the land disturbance permit was a little over, it was around $250. So it's a small amount. And basically that just pays the city. It gives the city enough of a fee to hire someone to come out and they'll check your, to make sure your silt fencing is done properly. And then if you don't, uh, be ready to get a letter that says nasty things because there's one thing about the municipalities that have gotten a lot worse and that's the environmental stuff. You don't want your mud, they don't want your dirt from your site getting on, you know, migrating to streams or ditches or any other, any else, anybody else's property. So you need to make sure your silt fence is done properly. You know, you'll keep the peace with the, the local inspectors, <laughs> the, the, the Gestapo. <laughs> The main thing I want to stress here is to go through the checklist that we provided earlier in the course and just make sure you've got all your ducks in a row. The main, the other thing is to just call your local municipality and ask them for a checklist. There's usually, there's typically, if I went back to that uh, forms, there's typically a checklist. Let's see, new construction. Yeah, I think this is like an express form, express information form. But you can see here, here's a, a checklist for your site plan. And then I'm sure it goes on to talk about one or two family dwellings. And don't be intimidated by this stuff. It's, it's really not uh, that bad. And don't be afraid to pull your own building permit. Uh, it's something that you should be free to do. Um, and it keeps people, it keeps our government kind of in check. And as long as people are um, showing the demand for the ability to do, to pull their own building permits, it keeps the whole system honest, you know, and it keeps our government in check. That's the way I look at it. I'm in the business of building homes, so I have to have a license and insurance and all of this. And so when I go to pull building permits, I have to show all this extra paperwork, but you as the owner have a right to build your own home without too much intervention. So you're gonna pay, you know, these little fees for these permits, but exercise your right uh, in, in our free society and, and get out there and, <laughs> and build, build a house. Thanks guys.